Hey, so lady, it's the latest families. Hope that you're doing well wherever you are, whenever you watch this video. And I am back to do a youth sermon. I'm up here in the crow's nest, as we call it, up above the church, um, after church. And this room has terrible lighting, but, you know, we're working with it. And I'm here to give you the youth sermon for today. And I hadn't done these in a few months because I had been giving a sermon while Dr. Mosser was out. And then Kristen handled the youth sermons for a little while. Uh, while we were transitioning out of that period. But now I'm back and here to give you a little bit of a rundown of the old scripture passage that we talked about today. We were in Acts 11 verses 1 through 18. And this passage is about um, the Apostle Peter and a vision that he has, a dream of sorts, where he's offered this food that God tells him to eat. And there's one problem though with this food is it goes against the restrictions, the dietary laws that Peter is supposed to be following as a devout Jew. And God tells him at the end of this dream though that what I have declared clean to you, you should not declare to be unclean. And Peter realizes that this dream is symbolic. It's a metaphor for the work that he's been doing with non-Jewish people with Gentiles, with people who were not accepted in the cultural and religious framework that he was raised in. Now, this seems like a really appropriate passage to me right now because we just heard the horrific news out of Buffalo yesterday about the racially motivated attacks. And this is a big issue in our country and there persists to be people who, you know, claim to follow Christ and who then claim to exclude and claim to, you know, demonize and treat others poorly, to hate others. And this passage just brings to the forefront that God's not good with that. That whatever we place barriers to where the spirit works, God's spirit's gonna move outside of that and has been moving outside of that and will move outside of that. And that we are called to join in, to set aside all of the things that we make boxes around people, all of the stuff that we do to keep people trapped in some sort of identity that we're not okay with, um, that we don't have that right. What God has called clean People who he's working through and with who look different, think different, speak different than us, that there are brothers and sisters and we're not supposed to try to impede them. And we're supposed to encourage and build up the work of God in those people's lives. So my challenge to you is this, when you hear the word unclean, if there's a person or type of person that comes to mind when you hear that, that's exactly the person that God is telling us is clean in his sight. The kind of person that God loves, the kind of person that God wants to redeem, God desires that all would be saved. That's the kind of person that God's prevenient grace, his ever loving grace that's going before is reaching out to and if we have the opportunity, which we will, we should be a part of that, of that healing, of that reconciliation, of that bringing back to God, even if we think they may not should be a part of everything that's going on with God and what God's doing. It's not our place to do that. It's God's place. And we're just called to love and to include. Now, you may think that sounds radical, maybe not, but that is the message of what this passage is trying to bring to us. So my challenge again to you is, as you go throughout your week at school and in your teams and wherever you are, who are the kids that are different than you? Who are the kids that maybe make you feel a little uncomfortable and realize that God loves and cares for them? And so we are actively called to love and care for them too, to make them feel included, to make them feel God's love. So I pray that you will see that this week and that when you see it and you hear the voice of God talking to you about it, that you'll listen and you'll do something about it. Glad that you listened this morning. Know that you are loved. We will see you all soon in person. I hope I'll talk to you later.